Hello, this is Kyla with Sketch Looms, and I am here to demonstrate how to take a doodle or a sketch and turn it into a small tapestry weaving. So, first thing you do <laughs> is you wind your warp on your loom. I personally prefer sketch looms. Um, because I'm, I, I, just, I really love them. <laughs> um, and you draw on whatever scrap paper you may have. This is some literal scrap paper. And um, cut it out so it'll fit behind your weaving. So here I have done a continuous warp where it's wrapping around the front and the back. So this can get a little confusing to look at. So, and having that piece of paper also helps get rid of that optical illusion that happens between the two warp threads and makes it a little bit easier to see. So, and these, this technique of drawing and putting what um, in the industry is called a cartoon has been around for a long, long time. So, um, it's a very handy technique, especially if you want to weave something with a bit more guidance. Some people are very comfortable with weaving and just letting things happen, and that's wonderful as well. So, I personally, I really like having some guidance on my weavings. Um, it helps my creativity flow <laughs> a bit more than if I just went um, freestyle. So, all right. So this is we here. This is our five by five sketch loom. Normally, it does not come multicolored. Um, this is one of my demo looms where I was using parts from different looms. Uh, this is a sword that comes with the loom, all in matching colors, as well as two shuttle needles. You can also use a darning needle or whatever you have on hand. Um, the looms also come with a corresponding heddle rod, which thanks to moving, <laughs> mine is MIA right now, I, it's somewhere safe. Um, same with one of my, my personal favorite size, which is the 5x7 sketch loom. I can show you its bigger brother. The five, or not the five, this is nowhere near five. This is the 12 by 10 inch, and which I will demonstrate on this one as well. And the larger looms, the seven by five and the 10 by 12 come with wooden verticals and wood and horizontal wood and plastic horizontals excuse me that will come apart completely so you can really compact it and um, store it in a small space so extra are our lovely beaters I love these little beaters they fit in the palm of your hand beautifully they are, um, now they are thicker, but not by much. Just, a, it's doubled, this thickness. And that's actually a bit more comfortable than this size. So. All right, so let's use the sword. So, I prefer to use a pickup stick or sword, but there is also the heddle bar, which will pick up your over under for you with simple change of alignment. 
and I will be creating more videos to demo all of those wonderful um, tools that come with the sketch loom. All right, so I know I want this peachy color for this half of my weaving, which is technically the foreground, but in this um, this part of the weaving, it, I am abstracting it with some dovetailing, which is a technique where setup is very important. So I want one needle going on one side, and my other needle going off to the other side of my loom. So I have this hot pink and peach. All right, I'm going to leave a little extra for my tail to tuck in. All right, so having your needles on opposite sides is very important for dovetailing or hatching. I've heard them called both. Or they're very similar techniques. It just depends. So now I've picked up my opposite from my under my under uh, over under over. I went over under over under. Best thing to do is look at the row that you had just finished and pick up what your yarn has over top from the previous row. All right. Then you're weaving. If you pick up all the same threads, you're not making fabric. So I'm going to tuck in my tails and I leave my tails out towards the front because I can clip them real close later or depending on the techniques I'm using I'll even use what I'll make what I'm seeing the back and what I'm not seeing the front so now I'm going to take my peach color and even with this tail tucked in. I'm going to go across almost all the way, but not completely. And this works best if you if you work with even pairs of threads and every every time I warp my looms, I never pay attention to that and I always have an uneven number and guess what? It's fine. It's not a big deal. If you try and have Think of these two at your edges and keep those as a pair. Things seem to work out a little bit better. So I'm going to squish my thread down. And now I'm actually not going to worry about using my sword right now with the technique I'm using. doing. I'm actually just going to use my needle to pick up my over, under, over, under. And sometimes I use my finger to help push down the threads that need to get pushed down and that makes it easier to pick up the ones that need to be picked up. So before I one, I don't want to pull too tight. I was pulling too tight and I just automatically fixed it by pulling, by putting my finger there. And this is from experience. All of this is automatic now. So I want to leave this at a big angle or a bubble. That X 
extra yarn is wrapping around my warp threads. So then it'll really cover my warp threads. If I didn't want my warp threads completely covered, I would not have to worry about that. So one of the wonderful things about these sketch looms is that they come with multiple ends per inch. And those of you who are experienced weavers know what the ends per inch means. And that just means if you think of a pair of sheets, when they tell you there's like, you know, a thousand ends in an inch, a thousand thread count, that's ends per inch. <laughs> so um, there are a thousand threads in an inch of weaving. So here I have eight vertical threads in one inch. So these looms come with six, eight, and ten ends per inch. So if you like to work with really bulky yarns, using the six ends per inch works out great. If you like working with average size, like worsted weight yarns, eight ends per inch is your great op is a great option. If you like working with finer threads, 10 ends per inch is the way to go for you. Another thing to consider is how detailed of an image do you like to create? So think of these as pixels as well. The closer they are together, the more of a detailed curve and smoother curve you'll be able to achieve. The further they are apart, it's a little bit harder. Is it impossible? No. So, what I did, without explaining, I went over top with my pink, over top covering some of that peach that I had woven previously, and then went back. So, with this technique, whenever you go into your weaving, you need to weave back with the same color. So when I go over top with my pink, I need to end back at the side that it started on. So for me, that is my right side. I believe it is flipped in the camera. I honestly don't remember. So, and I would have to let you know after editing. But either way, same technique. Doesn't matter what side they're on as long as you end with that same side. So now I don't want to go as far over as I did previously. I could. The main thing is I don't want to completely cover the edge or completely cover over my pink thread. If I do that, it locks it into place and it makes it harder to get this flow of back and forth going and it'll make a solid line going across my weaving instead of the zigzag. So with this sketch, I'm just going to continue it until I get further up. And get my hair caught in there. All right, so again, leaving either a very strong diagonal or a bubble to help cover those warp threads. And the more yarn that I get on and in my warp threads, the 
and I'm compacting it down a lot to really cover up, to really cover them up. So your first couple rows, it won't look right. It won't look completely covered and filled. And the more you put in and compress down, it'll look better. <laughs> so, or look more on how you intended it. And that's just how, just like the first th few rows of knitting or crochet, it doesn't always look that great until you get like a good inch or so in and then you see more of the stitches and things like that. So this pink one actually, let's see. So I'm with this area, I am loosely following my sketch. Um, and that just depends on you as the weaver, if you want to be very precise and follow it to the T that is an option, or you can be looser and use it as a guideline. So with these sketch looms, their size makes them wonderful to do samples on. Um, I have often filled them, used two or three warp threads in each of these notches to multiply my ends per inch for making a little sample before I head over to my floor loom. One sample I did, I was playing with new materials of paper yarn and I had been playing with a lot of ink and I wanted to know what would happen if I dripped ink onto woven paper. And that was a wonderful thing to see that I could do on the small scale without using up a lot of materials to get that experiment. So we are going to flip over through the power of TV <laughs> to the big loom. Well, the... 10 by 12, which with my camera set up, I can't show you the full thing. So with this one, I'm working with three colors at once, or three bobbins at once. And I actually need to add in some more of this green. Because I'm building up the center shape so here I built up here I built up the side first and then I would fill in with this yellowy green and orange on this blue background and as I was doing the blue on this side I weave in a little bit to lock my verticals in place. If I didn't overlap a little, I would get a slit. And slits are hand, can be very handy. And, um, or if you don't like them, you can just weave, you can stitch it together after you're done stit after you are done weaving. So these are what I am oh geez. What I am covering are just basic tapestry techniques. So if you have a local guild or shop that teaches weaving check out if they have a basic tapestry class 
because you can take all of these techniques and all those techniques and do them on a sketch loom. So a sketch loom is just a it's a tapest type of a tapestry loom. All right, so I need to weave in this end. I'm actually matching up what I have woven underneath me there. Now I'm picking up my over under over under. Pulling through. And I am going to build up. So here my diagonal, I can't weave that diagonal without making some steps. All right, because I'm working on a grid. So I'm going to weave and stop at this warp thread until I reach that line. So if you're working with a smaller needle, like I am right now, it's harder for me to go all the way across this big shape. So I'm just picking up, taking my time, paying attention to what I have. Personally, I like, I personally prefer to take my time and um, catch my mistakes as I'm making them versus having to pull them out. <laughs> but sometimes you just, sometimes you need to unweave. Just like knitting or crochet. Un unknitting, uncrocheting, unweaving, unstitching is just as important as weaving, stitching, <laughs> knitting, etc. And sometimes those mistakes turn out to be like wonderful things to leave in. So these little frame looms are a great option for those of you who want to try weaving but are a little too intimidated to start on a bigger loom like a rigid heddle or a floral loom. This gives you a taste of weaving without a huge um, cost in setup. And your weaving fabric is just as legit a fabric as if you were to use a bigger loom. So what if you wanted to weave something that was larger than 10 by 12? Well, what I could do is weave a bunch of squares or rectangles and stitch them together. Let's say I wanted to make a scarf. So I would need eight inches wide and about 72 to 60 inches long. So with 12 inches, if I wove five 
eight inch squares and stitched it together, I could make a scarf. So this loom is also the 6 EPI, so 6 ends per inch. So my threads are a little bit further apart in comparison. Alright, so let me show you. So here I'm going to weave back and forth real quick. And then lifting and now I want to end with my bobbin on the other side. So sometimes I use my fingers to squish and sometimes when I really want a good squish the beater gets a really good good squish. And then I'll just continue filling in the shape. Let me check my doodle. My doodle had sl slid up a little. Again, more scrap paper. <laughs> so, and this is literally the height that I want my weaving to be. Instead of drawing a line, I just folded this piece of paper. So. And as you can see, I have teal warp threads. You cannot see the teal through this yellow and orange. You would see it right away if you could. Last trick. to draw directly on the loom. It's a little hard to see, but with the Sharpie, you can draw directly on your warp threads. Hang on, this was a twining technique that I was showing my students. That. So here I can just continue. This is curved out, so I'd fill in my sides. Another <laughs> tip, if you are, uh, if you're wanting to weave the full length, don't actually warp it directly at the tippy top. Go just a smidge down and, um, because my, my warp has become looser, so where I would want to, personally, I want to like make it more taut, I can't because I can't adjust it any further up. So if you're wanting to weave very, like the full length, just make it a hair shorter, and that way you can adjust your tension if you need to. And I've had this warp on here for a, warp, a long time now because um, I set this aside. <laughs> this is a demo loom. Um, this one was my first one and I was so excited that I didn't even remove the um, paper.
and I would just continue weaving. If you have any questions, please contact um, us at Sketchlooms, or if or if you find this a video on YouTube, feel free to leave a comment. I will get back to you, especially if it is a um, tech weaving technical weaving question. If it's a question about the product. It's best to go to sketchloom.com and talk to Bill Crawford, who is the maker and creator of Sketchlooms, where um, I'm Kyla. I do the education and the technical weaving part and helped with the design of the loom in general. But uh, if you have any questions, go to sketchlooms.com. I will have a link in the description for you as well, but um, feel free to go check out these wonderful, wonderful little looms, especially if you want to learn how to weave, but you're a little intimidated, this little 5x5 five five guy, you get a whole bunch of tool, you get a sword, two shuttles and the heddle bar which is MIA for me right now <laughs> um, they all come with the loom as one price of 35 USD plus shipping and in a bunch of different colors here are some little samples that were done on the sketch loom. I use these looms for my personal artwork as well. This is a necklace that I've created using, this was using the um, 12 by 10 loom. I just didn't warp the full loom and left this really fun looped fringe on this necklace as well as up oh, here is an art piece that was woven on the 5x7 loom. So that just it needs to be mounted and finished. But this is the start of fine art. <laughs> so um, just a wonderful versatile tool. So definitely go check out Check it out at sketchlooms.com. All right, thank you. Have a wonderful...